the basic fundamentals again i'll be keeping very basic and the reason why i'm keeping it very basic because this course will be a platform independent course yes definitely we'll be choosing one uh, platform to have this course but whatever you're going to learn that will be from the grassroots level from the root level from the very basic level we are going to understand all the sensor protocols so that so that you can use all these techniques all these things whatever you have learned from this course to any other given platform to you because what happens is if you join a company it is not possible for a company to work on similar kind of platforms so let's say for a given project you might you might have to use one particular platform then for other project you might have to use some other platform so what keeps you know remaining same is your protocol your basic understanding your basic understanding is same your protocol remains same your protocol is not going to change only the platform the company is changing not the protocol so if you have proper protocol you can definitely develop anything on any given platform that's why for this uh, webinar you will be having a proper basic grassroots level of understanding of your sensing of embedded system so basic fundamentals it will be very basic let's say i have a sensor let's take any sensor once i have a sensor i need to first decide what type of sensor i need to use let's take an example of temperature sensor so what type of temperature sensor i need to use it depends on a lot of things like what are the voltage levels that i need to select there are different industrial voltage levels like 1.8 1.7 volt 3.3 volt 5 volt it depends on your processor system also like what what uh, you know voltage level your system supports and then the interface system data acquisition interface system what interface you are going to use how are we going to interface the sensor to our processing unit so that comes in your data acquisition how we are going to acquire or how we are going to read or how we are going to communicate with the sensor then again once we have raw data how are we going to process it how are we going to convert the raw data into the relevant data let's say i have a temperature sensor so the sensor will not give you the raw data in terms of temperature the sensor is going to give you in some other format so that format you need to convert it into temperature format so for that you need some some piece of code so how you are how you are going to write the piece of code and how you are going to process it and then after processing obviously we need to store it display it or you can use the data for for other processing also so this is the basic fundamental of my uh, sensor based embedded systems not going any any further uh, you know deeper version because i think this is what we need to understand first like uh, you know the basic fundamentals and then you know later we can we can go and look into like what 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 we need and how we design it so just yes, example temperature sensor data acquisition let's say i'm using any serial interface let's say i use uh, uh, uart as my serial interface and then for that for for my processing i i have to choose one processing unit so i may go for any microcontroller or i may go for any microprocessor also and then again you know displaying and storage so we can have a digital display like lcd we can have or any any other displays we can have or we can uh, send the data remotely to to my uh, you know uh, remote cloud or remote uh, network so this is my basic fundamental and this is what you need to have to understand or to design any sensing based embedded system four steps very easy sensors data acquisition processing display and storage that's it that is all you need to know and that is all i have explained to you so the next would be my case study yes so as i mentioned earlier we will be going to discuss a very beautiful and very relevant very fresh case study and which is nothing but my fitness bands you might have seen lot of fitness bands lot of fitness watches nowadays nowadays a lot of companies are going into this market 
of launching fitness bands, fitness tracking bands, smart watches, and all those stuff. Uh, and I think uh, one of the band is familiar. This you can see. This is Apple Watch, and this is one of the most, you know, advanced fitness band or the smart watch. Now it is available, and with that, we have a lot of others and dedicated uh, fitness bands available uh, in the market. And and why I have chosen this topic is because uh, this was one of my recent project, and we have uh, completed this project. So yes, what and how the fitness band works, and and what what are the features are there and how how all the feature works so i'm going to just explain you briefly about it i will not take a lot of time on explaining each and every features so let's start with temperature first because that is you know the basic feature so i have a band i have a fit band i have a smart watch which has temperature feature so how it works basically in the watch you'll be having some metal contact or you will be having some some sort of sensor which will you know firstly the band you have to wear it on your wrist or 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 maybe wherever the company recommends you to wear so uh, based on your skin it will calculate temperature of your body the temperature sensor is going to calculate temperature of your body and generally industry uses temperature sensor which has some kind of memory unit in it. What do you mean by memory unit? So what happens is, let's say I have a temperature sensor. So it is very difficult. Let's say I have 30, 40 sensors I have interfaced to my controller. And if let's say I want to monitor, I want to read data from all those 30, 40 sensors simultaneously. So instead of that, instead of reading simultaneously, we can choose a sensor which has memory device in it. So what will happen is we will send a command to sensor. The command will be like read the data and instead of sending it back, store it in your memory itself so that whenever the processor needs it, we can able to retrieve the data. So it is very important feature nowadays. Most of the sensors are coming with this feature where they have memory unit in it. Memory unit in the sense they will be having a lot of registers. If you guys are from electronics, you can you can understand what you mean by register. Register is nothing but a digital storage device or a component uh, or a design which is used to store digital data. So what happens is like from the controller or from the chip, we will be sending one, one request to the sensor that start the conversion for starting the conversion and read the data and keep on storing the data into the sensor itself because we will be having other processes to do because this is not related to you know only acquiring data and displaying because we have a lot of other processes a lot of other sensors we need to manage it efficiently so for that instead of reading continuously we will read whenever we want to read and we will start the conversion so for that we can have a feature like we can choose one sensor which has this feature and then simply you know uh, reading the temperature whenever we want it so we'll be having a good amount of data and the sensor will have also some features where the sensor gives you a alert yes that the data is ready so that is nothing but your data ready signal so we'll be sending start signal to the sensor and the sensor will start reading sensor will store some amount of value and when sensor says that yes i have stored it and my data is ready so the sensor will send you back the signal not the data it will send you a signal it will signal your controller or your processor that yes data is ready and you can you can read it from from the sensor so this is how we can read a temperature sensor and this is how we read it instead of reading it continuously we set some parameters based on that the temperature calculates by itself and it keeps the data ready. And whenever the user requests to read the temperature, let's say on my smart band, I have a button or I have a touch button. If I touch on temperature, so once I touch it, it will send a request to my sensor that yes, I'm ready to read the data. So after that, the processor will check whether the data is actually ready or not. So we are not going to read it every time once you touch or once you request from the band that you need to read temperature sensor sensor has to acknowledge basically that yes my data is ready and you can read it so once i 
get the signal i'll be reading it i'll be writing one piece of code to convert that raw data into my temperature data and i'll be displaying it that okay this is your body temperature now that we can have other features also as i said you can keep a timer the timer will be like you know after every 1 hour i can or after every after 30 minutes i can set a timer and the timer will you know calculates your temperature after every 30 minutes and it will keep on storing in your band our band specially we design with the memory one one small small amount of memory which stores all your reports in it so in the form of reports we can store the temperature so the same principle we use for other types of features and sensors also so let us discuss something which is new to the market that is your heart rate and blood oxygen level so how do they calculate heart rate and blood oxygen level i'll just give you one brief idea because i have worked on blood oxygen level and heart rate for more than 7 months and the algorithm in it so basically how it works is let's talk about heart rate first i will not go much deep into the biology of how your heart functions but basically how your heart function is our heart is responsible to pump and depump two types of blood in your body it pumps the blood which has oxygen in it that is called oxygenated blood and it retrieves or depumps the deoxygenated blood which is you know the blood which is not having oxygen so that is the primary function of your heart it pumps and it depumps it compresses and it rarefacts your oxygen and deoxygenated blood so it takes oxygen from your lungs so your lungs passes oxygen to your heart and the heart mixes your oxygen uh, with your blood again i'm not going in deep like how, how it how it mixes and all just i'm giving you an overview of how a heart functions so this is how your heart works and this is the main uh, function of your heart so what happens is how to calculate heart rate so what what we can what we have done is we have chosen one special type of transmitter that actually transmit one light a special type of light and that light and that that particular sensor you need to you need to keep it on your wrist or maybe that sensor you need to touch it by your finger or wherever uh, you have a proper blood circulation in your body keep in mind it should not be placed on your bones it should be placed somewhere on your body where you have you know good blood circulation or where you have veins and arteries properly okay so how it works is we'll be keeping the sensor on let's say i have a band based sensor so i'll be keeping it on my wrist and we'll starting one special type of led sensor that led sensor will actually penetrate my skin and it will go inside and let's say i have a vein which carries blood so and then just below that i have bones so it will go and it will reflect from the blood and then i'll be having a special type of receiver that light receiver so i have a special type of led i have a special type of light receiver so basically i have special type of transmitter i have special type of receiver so i'll be transmitting data i'll be transmitting some kind of light data and your blood is basically made up of rbcs and wbcs that is red blood corpuscles and white blood uh, corpuscles your white blood corpuscles wbcs are responsible for your immune systems and lot of other things and your red blood corpuscles are actually related to you know carrying oxygen and carrying other vitamins to your body so we so what basically happens is whenever you transmit any light signal your rbc red blood corpuscles they're going to absorb some amount of light which you have transmitted so what happens is whatever data we receives in our receiver that is in the form of that that gives us the randomness and that randomness is based on your heartbeat when your heart pumps at that time we will be reading or we will be getting some different value in our receiver and when your heart retrieves the blood at that time you will be getting different type or different uh, value in our receiver so we will be having different rate of values which we are getting in our receiver so yes these are the raw data that we are going to get and again heart rate is calculated 
as beats per minute so we have to run this algorithm for 1 minute so for 1 minute we have to keep on monitoring the data with this data we'll be getting some raw value and these raw values we actually put one strong digital signal processing algorithm we have designed so that you know you might have seen in ecg graphs that how our heart beats we have a big wave and then we have a small wave so we actually calculate the trust of that big wave and we calculate that how many trusts are there in a single minute so based on that we calculate heart rate of a system so again for this band the system will be same whenever you request heart rate from your band it will send one request directly to the sensor sensor will start calculating the heart rate calculating the raw data and it will not give you the data back it will keep on calculating and will keep on storing the data into its memory unit once the data is ready the sensor itself will notify you that yes data is ready and you can read the entire data and that we will be reading that the entire data and then we will be putting the data into one algorithm and then we will be uh, calculating the heart rate of a given person and this is the the same uh, method which i have explained you in the in the basic fundamental you know like having a sensor retrieving the data putting some algorithm storing and displaying that is what you need and again one more very new feature is your blood oxygen level blood oxygen level again it works on the same principle as the heart rate heart rate works your red blood carries oxygen and when you pumps and depumps when your heart pumps and depumps your oxygen uh, your blood then based on the data we get on the sensor that actually saturates like when it pumps will be having more oxygen in your blood and when it deep pumps or when it retrieves will be having lesser oxygen so that ratio we calculate and that ratio is called the blood saturation ratio that is spo2 there is a special term for that spo2 level monitoring for blood oxygen we actually use heart rate also so to read blood oxygen level first we start heart rate and then based on the beats we calculate the raw data for blood oxygen level so this is one of the latest feature that lot of companies are giving for fitbank because nowadays it is really important because after the after the covid 19 pandemic it is really important to you know be healthy and to track your body like how your body is functioning and what is your heart rate and how much oxygen you have so it is really important nowadays lot of people they are really you know becoming becoming health conscious and which is very very good thing and that is the reason why lot of companies are going into this market this is how this work so then again we have other fitness features like step counters and fall detection step counters and fall detection uses a single sensor which is your accelerometer which calculates the acceleration of your body based on the gravity acceleration that is acceleration due to gravity so it calculates your acceleration into three dimension three axis x y z and with the help of this we can calculate step counter and fall detection you might have uh, uh, you know experience this sensor or this feature not this feature but the use of this sensor in your cell phone so there is a feature in our cell phone called you know whenever you turn your phone in in landscape mode so your video or photo or whatever you're watching it automatically turns so this is the use of accelerometer or there is one more sensor called gyroscope so with the help of these sensors they used to rotate the screen of your cell phone so okay that is different part but now we are we are focusing on step counter and fall detection so how how step counter works so step counter is basically how many steps you have walked it's like a walking counter how many steps and like it will calculate the steps you have walked and uh, how it works basically is it works on your vertical axis acceleration so like whenever a human moves whenever a human walks there is a little variation in the vertical acceleration the vertical axis acceleration and the sensor is so accurate to calculate that vertical axis moment in the form of step because there might be one doubt that you know a lot of people have small steps a lot of people have bigger steps how we calculate it so let me clear you that this step counter is not based on your the distance how you what what is the distance between your uh, between your steps so it is basically on some other technology because if it is based on your distance then this is not 
possible you know to develop such kind of feature because every human will have different steps every human will have different speed also as well and and that's why this technology will not work so the basic technology is it, it determines the variation in your vertical axis of your acceleration and based on that it counts the step again the technology is same whenever you want to start step counter just give an alert to the sensor the sensor will start step counting it will keep on storing into one memory unit or into a dedicated register inside the accelerometer and whenever the data is ready it will notify to your controller and it depends on the controller whether the controller wants to read it at that time or not and again we can have continuous step counting feature where we can continuously calculate and keep on storing the step counters then again for fault detection fault detection is important you know if you are working in in a factory or or your labor or you know if you are working in some goods carrier vehicle uh, goods carrier transportation a uh, job there if if this feature is required where you are falling it suddenly or if some accident happens basically if some accident happens to you or while walking or, or if you slips away or something anything happens then again based on the accelerometer whenever you fall you will be having you know one sudden drastic change of the acceleration of the sensor and based on that uh, the device calculates that yes the fall detection has occurred and it will actually store and give you one notification yes the fault detection has occurred and this feature can be enable disable and yes this also works on the same will be keeping this feature on in the accelerometer by sending one command to the sensor and the sensor will keep on reading it and once the fault detects the sensor will keep on storing the data yes fault has detected and whenever we want it we will be reading otherwise we will just ignore it 